everybody and welcome back to another adobe live here in the uk where you'll find us every weekday between 12 and 1. now if you're watching us on youtube that's just fine but you won't be able to get involved in the chat and ask questions of our guests and, and get involved with the community so come along and join us at behance.net slash adobe live where you can meet everybody and of course get involved Fantastic. Well, I'll give a shout out to some of you shortly. But first of all, let me introduce and welcome today's guest, who is Owen Gildersleeve. Hi, Owen. How are you doing? Yeah, really well. How are you? Yeah, it's all good here. Thank you. It's great to have you uh, along for this. It's uh, really nice, especially as uh, we haven't actually had a chance to chat before today. No, not face to face. No, it's, uh, no. Yeah, it's really nice finally getting to connect. It is, yeah, with several attempts and uh, and uh, just in case I do slip into your brother, I, I taught um, Owen's brother uh, for a while, just in case my mind gets addled and I suddenly switch, I'm going to apologise. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally but, fine. Uh, no, fantastic. Well, just before we get rolling, let's see who we've got in the chat today. And you might be surprised to know, um, Owen, that quite a lot of the people who are here in our community have been with us right since adobe live at lunchtime started um way back in in march so at the beginning of the first lockdown so uh, let's see we've got angus in here hi angus first one in today uh, andreas and sean guten tag uh, both of you uh we've also got vanessa hi we've got richard we've got caroline i saw in there as well and i think Catherine's here too uh brilliant who else have we got who are the I can't see Sandrine just yet. Oh, Kirsty's here. Hi, Kirsty. And uh, a few, I'm sure uh, Sandrine will be in there somewhere. Uh, and Stuart is here and Oliver. So welcome uh, you and welcome everybody else, of course, who's joining us, especially if you're joining us for the first time. Oh, and Jackie's there as well. Fabulous Jackie Mulvar. So, Owen, for people who've not come across you uh, just as yet, not, not discovered you just yet, so how would you like to introduce yourself? Um, well, I guess I'm an artist based in uh, London, UK, and um, I make things. So all my illustrations predominantly handcrafted um, out of paper. Um, and the work ranges from small scale illustrations right up to large installations, um, pieces for exhibitions, things like that. Um, and although things handmade, there's a lot of digital process. So it's kind of that crossover of uh, the handmade and digital realms kind of coming mm. together. Fantastic. And people can see your work, of course, in a range of places. And Tim will pop your website uh, into the chat uh, for us as well. So people can visit that later on. But you're also an author as well, which we'll talk about later on, right? You've got three books uh, yep. out. So I think two are completely your own and one's a collaboration, isn't it? With Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. 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 And so today you're going to be showing us through uh, sort of the highlights of some of your process, because it's kind of difficult to do the whole thing from start to end. But you're going to take us through the highlights. Is that about right? Yeah, that's it. I, I kind of just wanted to show the crossover of using various different programs and how even if you do work by hand, it's quite beneficial to be um, using these programs for planning and then for the final sort of editing stage um, uh, with, I guess, a shortened down making section in the middle. <laughs> right. OK, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> did, did, and before you start doing that, did you have anything you wanted to show us first before we got going or do you want to dive straight in? It's entirely up to you how you play sure, it. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, of course. Well, I was going to show you, um, these are some of the books that you mentioned earlier. So, um, yeah. This is my first book, Papercut, which came out, I think it was uh, 2014. 2014, yeah. yeah. Uh, and this was a really interesting uh, 
project was, I was asked to uh, write a book on uh, paper cut illustration and decided to bring together 25 artists from around the world. And it was a really nice opportunity for me to, um, well, meet other artists who I'd come across, uh, I guess, a lot because I was kind of competing with them for jobs. <laughs> right. And actually, like having a chance to chat to them about their work and um, and it's, it's such a range of different ways you can approach uh, paper illustration and and mm -hmm. the book kind of covers that spectrum um, and then the second book that you discussed was um, My Amazing Body Machine um, yeah. and uh, that was a collaboration with Robert Winston who is um, Ooh, sort of, Dr. You know, Winston yeah, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Winston <laughs> yeah, Dr. <laughs> Professor, actually Professor yeah. Professor yeah. Dr. Robert Wilson <laughs> It was Winston, a really yes. fun project and we were creating these, uh, I did 50 anatomical illustrations and this was a really nice challenge because I was working with a range of scientists because obviously it's a book that children will be learning from and so everything kind of had to be correct in terms of um, the styling, you know, where the pieces of a body were and these are all multi-layered illustrations which I made in my studio. Um, I, I photograph a lot of my work in my own studio as well. Um, it's kind of a contained process. Um, and then obviously edit so that it can be supplied to um, a client or, or for whatever use um, that is. So yeah, it's quite, uh, quite a lot going on here. It's, it's been a busy yeah. spell, but yeah. No, it's fantastic. I, I, I love your work. It's really, really great. Oh, so. You. So you're going to show us through, uh, you can take it away with showing us through if you like, if we're going to. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so Plenty of gonna... time, so we're all good. Cool. So we're going to start off in Illustrator, um, yeah. uh, just taking you through the initial concepts. And um, one thing I still do is do all my sketches by hand using pencil. Uh, it's a bit old school, but I kind of find that my initial sort of concept staging um, I, I, I have a, a, a sketchbook which I carry around with me everywhere and I'm always sketching ideas and, and I find it's a kind of a nice way to supply um, ideas to clients or collaborators or whoever I'm working with. Um, and this particular sketch was for um, a sort of background illustration, um, a campaign I've recently been working on for Vistaprint. And I thought I'd show you it because it's quite festive and very current. So hopefully it brings some holiday cheer. Um, Fantastic. I think we can all do with some of that right now. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, in, it's very much needed. Um, yes. So once the sketches are, are completed, I'll bring them into Illustrator. And it's then a case of uh, drawing up um, using the pendulum. Hmm. So I'll... When, when drawing up my pieces, I'll try and uh, draw them in as in... Uh, imagine them as layers because once when I make the pieces, everything is kind of layered up using um, uh, bits of foam board and white tack. And so I was going to focus on a flower because these are quite elaborate illustrations and I'll be here for hours if I was doing the whole thing. Um, so kind of just start bringing these to life. Um, yeah. And I'm basically sort of focusing on, on these as if they are a layered piece. So each element is like an individual item. Um, so you're thinking about them in their paper form, how they're going to become yeah, sort of because cut out. Yeah, because if I was just drawing it purely for digital, I wouldn't have to think about the, item, the elements that aren't actually visible, um, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, yeah. And with my work, I kind of have to think of not just the stuff that you can see, but the things you can't see. So you can see this is going to be a background piece. And right. I'm kind of so it has going, that whole structure, yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of going right round and completing this as a, as a single item. Because this will be, you know, once I've made it white, this will start like layering up and you can see the elements are uh, beginning to become kind of, this is kind of a, a representation of how it's going to start looking. You know, everything will be layered up, sat on top of one another. Um, and the reason I use Illustrator is 
Um, well, for everything I do is handmade, I I really like it to have like quite a graphic, well finished touch. Um, yeah. And obviously, the handmade finish, you know, hand cutting things adds a nice quality to the line. But I still want it to be crisp. You know, I'm, I guess my work is coming from a design background rather than a craft background, uh, if that makes sense. So, yeah, it's it's kind of important to me that it has a a sort of a well finished crisp feel and this is kind of giving you an idea of where we're at um so I always make sure to keep the sketches on separate layers so this kind of rough I idea of kind of me drawing up a piece and and kind of carving into the layers trying to make sure everything's nice and crisp and so you do work it with the pencil tool like that you you draw completely yeah, I, I do. I, I sometimes use a pen tool if, um, if it's just graphic, like super graphic shapes, but mm. I find actually just working into it quite an easy way. And it's, uh, gives me a chance to have a bit of flexibility in, in the line and, and how it's so kind of coming together. Here's, uh, one I've kind of, drew up earlier which kind of gives a more accurate idea of the form and shape and how it's all looking and you can see that you've got the separate petals everything's on its own layer mm. and everything is kind of you can see in the background um things are joined obviously once it's out of eye shot you can be a little bit messier with some of the joints um but in general it's kind of created in a way that I would uh, I would make this and so once everything's drawn up, I will then look to add in some color. And with my projects, I um, I tend to try and work with a color palette. Um, I sometimes get supplied a palette by a client. Other times, I'm coming up with palettes myself, and just trying to push the range of colors so they're not just. I guess. And do you have a primary or secondary or something like that? Do you have a process for that or do you use a particular tool or do you eyeball it or? Um, it, I guess it. sometimes I've seen something which I really like the color palette of and I'll, I'll keep a reference images um, sort of stored away, say on Instagram or something like that. And then when yeah. a project comes around, I'll look through those references and be like, oh, that colorway is really nice. I'll, I'll throw that in and pick the colors out from that. Um, other times it's just play, you know, it's kind of creating little swatch um, bars like this and just being like, right, I, I need a certain range of tones to bring this to life. What might work? You know, how can I push this so it's not just a primary red, a primary green, you know, or a secondary yeah. green. It's it's like, and so these are kind of got a slight earthiness to them. Um, and also imagining it in paper as well for me is kind of important um, because when I color things up, I'm kind of looking at them building up from light to dark as well yes. because in my in my illustration work um when you've made it it, it it fits better with the shadows to to actually work tonally in that I manner it. it sort of helps add a bit of depth to the mm. motions so kind of drawing these up and uh working out the colors um i think one thing is i am having while i'm working on these to imagine these as uh, they all have layers between them and shadow. And so sometimes the colors are going to sit quite close. But I know that once we add a little bit of depth, these will really start coming to life. And do you, do you have, somebody's asking actually, Sean's asking in the chat, do you have um, paper swatches for colors? So do you have, with some of the, the actual materials you use, do you? Yeah, I um, I actually have um, a whole plan chest of paper in my studio. And so... I will often sort of reference that, but for me, actually, uh, my focus is creating designs based on the colors I want them to be. And then I'll find colors as close as possible, but in the retouch, which I'll show you in a bit, I'll actually push the colors to be closer to what my designs are. So I'm kind of designing, I guess also sometimes working with clients, they have a set palette for their, their brand. And so I, I need to design based on those and then when I'm making, I'm being like, right, that blue is close enough. But I know that in Photoshop, I can push that blue to be closer. And, and that's kind of what I'm doing here is creating a design based on a palette I like, and then 
down the line I can try and match up. So this is a sort of one of the many elements of this illustration, but this is kind of almost the finished piece. And I've thrown it onto a, a background color, which I thought would be nice to sort of really bring this to life, um, bring it off the page. Um, and then for me, once these drawings are all finished up, um, I need to move on to making. And this is a really good tool illustrator for getting things signed off by clients, because especially in the, in the paper cut world, um, once you start making, it's very hard to go back. So this kind of allows me a couple of rounds of approval and sign off um, and to do amends and things. Um, and, and these illustrations are very, very close to how the final will look. But obviously it's brought off the page and brought to life, but I, I'll send these, do some rounds of amends, you know, normally two or three, and then um, do any tweaks and changes that are needed. And once these are approved, I'll then pull them apart for making. Um, so we're pulling apart stages fairly simple. Um, literally, as I say, just kind of pulling the illustration into its various components, uh, into various colors. See some lines, which I decided not to use, but. Oh, that was um, for the um, stamen. Is that what it is? Yeah. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, know, I know for a minute. I know for a fact that in a minute somebody on the chat is going to help me out with my weak knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> That's what usually happens. So remember, and, I, and, I, and I'm not, I'm not intending to. Uh, this is not an intentional spoiler. If it is a spoiler, but I seem to remember back from the book uh, that. Or maybe you did a movie around it. I can't remember now. But I think you took this and then you you print out on the reverse of the paper you're going to cut. Is that pretty much it? Sorry for the spoiler. Yeah, effect. no, that's that's fine. I, there's two methods I use. So um, one will be, as you say, um, I've got these artboards which are set to A4 size, which yeah. I've kind of just drawn up, and I'll I'll kind of duplicate them for how many colours there are. So mm. we're looking at five colours here. So I'll oh, I've actually inadvertently yeah it's when it catches the corner of an art ball yeah. and it, it just duplicates with it yeah <laughs> and one thing to point out what i tend to do when i'm pulling artworks apart is i keep the various stages in case i need to go back so i've got the original drawing i've got the pulled apart two size and then i've got a slightly sized up because i realized that if i made it to this size everything would be very very small and what mm. i'm wanting to do is just make life easy but i also don't want to scale it up so much because with paper art you kind of want to see all the nice textures and and um, yes. and if you go too big then it all gets lost so we've got the various boards here all, all the different colors um, all with a line around them and there's two methods I'll, I'll use I'll either um, flip the artwork um, and print these out just as line work you know so I'll, I'll, I'll remove a color and print those out uh, yep. or I sometimes use a, it's called a silhouette cameo, and it's actually a, um, a, a kind of digital cutter. Um, oh, right, like a plotter cutter? Yeah, a plotter like one cutter. of the Gerber machines, or, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's a quite a simple one you can... Graphitech. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're fairly yeah. simple. Um, if I'm cutting by hand, I actually, so I was going to show my tool. I use a yeah. uh, surgical grade scalpel. Yeah, um, 10A. Which you, yeah, 10A, that's it. Yeah. Um, these are quite hard to find in the US, actually. Um, a lot of people um, use... Uh, exacto. Exacto, yeah, exacto knives, knives, yeah. But these are a lot better because they're really good for cutting the curves. Um, and you can change the blades easily. I mean, th these are meant for surgery. So, you know, it's um, they're as sharp as they're going to get. Yeah. Um, and they go through human skin quite easily. So that's why... <laughs> yeah, so they're going to cut paper like butter. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, um, so I, I use this and, and so what I'm doing, you know, if, if I was to do this, uh, I'll print these out onto the color of paper I choose uh, reversed and then I'll cut everything out and um, use uh, white tack for adding depth or bits of foam board here, yep. which is uh, just sort of foam core. Um, if I was to send these off to cut, um, Silhouette actually, instead of just uh, print, there is um, a, a plugin that I use often, which is a, uh, it means you could just send to Silhouette 
and right. the silhouette cutter will um you, you just have to sort of select the line work um send everything off and you send them out uh sort of sheet at a time color at a time so it's, it's a very similar process it's, it's obviously quicker using the silhouette but it's so precise that actually i do like to cut by hand because it adds that sort of quality handmade sort of finish to the line which yeah. you just can't recreate yeah so everything is printed um we've got all of the sheets um cutting away and i'm going to jump a stage because i want to show more about programs i guess than the making um but this is kind of like the finished flower um, yeah, and you which can see the camera. dimension that light adds to it with yeah. yeah and what i've done is i i've so i'll pull this apart to show you but um what you can kind of see if i if you just flick back to the screen hmm. um this is kind of one of the uh pieces the sort of central piece has been cut out um and then once i've cut it i'll actually sort of add a bit of life to the edge so i'm actually kind of like forming it um just trying to bring it off the page a bit because if it's just flat sometimes it actually ends up looking digital which is not what i want you know you do want things to have a handmade quality i mean i'm using little bits of white white tack to add depth so and white tack's quite good because it's um it doesn't leave too much of a mark compared to say a blue my blue desk tack. always has a big blob of it in the corner of the drawer. <laughs> I've just pulled it out from the drawer <laughs> just see it's good stuff and then we just stick sticking these together and that's kind of, you know, a fully sort of layered up little illustration piece. Um, and then what's, what I do to photograph these is very, very simple. I just have, um, as you can see, my studio, it's, I'm quite lucky to have some big windows, a lot of natural light. And so I'm, I'm actually just putting these pieces on a table in front of a window. And that is my light box. You know, it's, it's just natural light. It's, it's the best kind of light you need. Um, it's, it gives a really nice soft shadow. It retains that sort of paper um, grain and quality. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't bleach everything out. And so I'm just taking really simple photos of these. Do you have um, any sort of diffusion there to, 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 to kind of uh, spread the rays of the light out? Or? Sometimes it would just be a piece of tissue paper on the window. Right. Um, it's as simple as that. It's, it's a very yeah. basic setup. I don't have a tripod. Um, it's just a camera in hand, stood over a table, uh, maybe a bit of... Actually, I've got some more today actually stuck up because it's, it's for one sunny day in London that I'm doing right. this talk. <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's just uh, stuck up on window and, and it kind of gives that nice soft box feel, um, yeah. which is great. Um, and so everything has been cut out and made. And, and this is, I've sped through this process, but there's quite a lot more to that um, mm. development wise. But it's, that's kind of the essence. And then once the things are photographed, I'll then bring them into Photoshop. And so this is the a final photo. This is like the, what, what we're sort of working with. Um, and as you can see, um, there are pieces of visible white tack. Um, it's, you know, but what's been quite nice is that the little curves I've added um, have given a little bit of light and dark to the piece um, and so my process then is is to pen tool these out um, so I'll literally just work around the element because sometimes I'll, I'll um, do a piece in one go so it'll be just a fully layered piece and it's just a case of doing a bit of retouching to clean up other times for illustrations like this um, there's actually uh, a need to animate these in in After Effects down the line, and so they actually right. want a, a fully layered file, and so I'm having to create an artwork which has every element on a separate layer, yeah. and so my kind of process for doing that is taking these photos, artwork and everything separately, bringing the artwork together as kind of like a comp in Photoshop, and then it means I can supply the final layered file to an animator to kind of bring to life. And I'm, I'm doing these quite rushed. Um, I'd probably spend a little bit more time on this normally, but it's kind of, it's a fairly simple process. I love the meticulousness of it though. I think it's, I think it's great that it's got all of these tiny granular processes involved in it. Yeah, I mean, it's quite a labor intensive process, uh, my work, but 
I don't know. I, I don't want to cut corners, and I I kind of I actually enjoy every single part of it because the initial idea generation is quite fun in itself. Um, you know, coming up with ideas, coming up with the sketches. Um, I also really like the cutting because it's quite therapeutic. But I have to say, sometimes the editing at the end is one of my favourite bits because at that stage it's kind of it's all photographed, it's all ready to go, and I can kind of put some music on and just get lost in the retouch and and I, I quite enjoy that actually. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm kind of on like, another on another project that I work on. Um, I'm lucky enough to work with a uh, German um, animator and visual artist, Chris Vigant. She does a lot of paperwork as well. She's a stop motion animator. Okay. So she does I'm some uh, stuff. You, you ever yeah, come across I, her? I, I recognize the name and I mean, mm. stop, stop motion is a whole different ball game. That's, uh, mm. you know, you have to have some real patience for that kind of work. Um, yeah, she's done some fun stuff. I think she's been on the Adobe Live German streams, I think, before. But oh, right. Let's have a look. And have you ever heard of, in terms of uh, engineering, have you ever heard of um, uh, Kelly Anderson? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, she's, she is, I've, I've actually got one of her books behind me here. This one, this, this book is a planetarium. Oh, wow. Which actually opens out. It's got a whole bunch of different things in it. It's got a decoder ring there. This oh, yeah. is the actual planetarium. And you put a phone inside of it. So you put a phone in there. And then you can see absolutely. the northern hemisphere through that. And it projects That's up. Absolutely amazing. I'm a, big, <laughs> I'm a big fan of hers. Over there, I've got one of her other books uh, called This Book is a Camera. And it oh, is yeah, an I, actual working camera. Yeah, I, I actually do have that book. Um, do you? Yeah. Really yeah, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, so, what I'm doing here is, um, I actually do want to use this shadow. Um, yep. So I've, I've, first, I've penciled uh, the top layer out, and then um, when I select my uh, line work, because it's not a vector, it's, it's a photo, I soften it by about 0.3 pixels, uh, just to kind of give it a softer edge. Um, yeah. I'll then, also take the shadow and I'll show you why in a second. So I'm creating these kind of layered pieces which are, are fully editable. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of what we're working with at the moment. Yeah. Um, so we've got the flower head, you've got the shadow behind um, and then the background. And now it's a case of doing a bit of a retouching. So with all my work, I kind of, um, the photos generally are uh, a little bit darker than I need. So I'm kind of. Yeah. yeah Cause you always have to think about the, uh, uh, about how much ink deepens the colors that you produce. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and also when you photograph a piece, it's nice to, it's better to photograph a bit darker because it retains, um, more detail in the image. Yeah. Um, if you photograph too light, you actually lose some of the, the nice detail in the piece and then mm. suddenly it, it starts getting a bit messy. Um, so I'm doing some really basic sort of retouch, um, using the masks because obviously we don't want to, um, do anything that's affecting the original image. Um, yeah. You know, something I learned quite early on from some of the uh, photographers I was working with is never, never sort of edit the image itself because if you want to go back in, you're totally screwed. Um, the chat's enjoying this, by the way. Really, really oh. enjoying it. I'm glad Not so many to... questions at the moment, which is fine because they're first of all they've been trading war stories on uh, and people who've got a ten A scar on their leg from college. Ouch! <laughs> I worked with somebody. I worked with somebody who did that once back in the um, back in the eighties. Uh, a guy called Don Don Vashevsky. I don't. I have no idea what he does these days, but he used to be one of the illustrators on MASK, which was sort of a knockoff Transformers uh, animation. And we worked on drawing boards then, weren't any computers. And on the bottom of a drawing board, 
you had a tray that clipped on the bottom and you drop your pens and everything into that tray as you were working. And on Mondays, we used to clean and chalk the boards so we, they were clean for a whole new week. And then you'd clip on the stuff and then you'd work. But he was going, oh, I'm in a rush, I'm in a rush. And um, and he was just, he was cutting some, cutting some masking film out just on there and just, as you do, just plop your scalpel down on the drawing board next to it. And of course it's shot down, wasn't caught by the tray and just oh, went my. dunk into, into his uh, leg. Not, he wasn't, he wasn't seriously hurt. I've just got to point out, but. but I, I've done that a few times. Our manager, Ian, fainted. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even look at it. He just, just the thought of the thing, when he realised what had happened, he just went, boff. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty grim. Yeah. They, are, they are so sharp. Oh, yeah. Really, really, really. You've got I've to respect had... them. Yeah, and basically my top tip is don't ever work when you're tired. If you're getting yeah. too tired, just put the, put the scalpel down because I've had friends, like, chop off tops of fingers. Yeah, um, same. Just, just from working too late on, you know, maybe they're getting to the end of a project and just want to get it done. And then suddenly it's like, that's when you start making mistakes. So, yeah, yeah. don't mess with the scalpels, people. Um, I'd say that mine is, is is power. If you put, if you find that you're exerting too much power on the blade that's oh, and yeah. you're using a straight edge, then that power translates into speed. And the chances are that, you know. Yeah, it can get really messy, actually. Um, yeah. So, yeah, just be careful, people. Absolutely. Um, and so I'm just doing a bit of cleaning up here. I've got obviously a separate um, retouch layer I've created so that again, it kind of turn on and off as I go. Um, mm. And then what I was gonna do is just adjust the background. And so I mentioned that I'm keeping the shadow separate. Um, and what I'm wanting to do here is just kind of push it to the point where it's just a shadow. So it's just kind of, you can see it's. Yeah. And I'm kind of going to take a bit of hue out of it. Um, oh, I keep touching the. Uh... Oh, the control. You're on a Cintiq, are you? And you just. Yeah. Really are... Yeah. And you keep catching the bar. I turn all of the all of those things off. <laughs> yeah. I should have. As much as I can. I should. Yeah. I, I know for next one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can see that we've got a a nice little uh, layer now, which is um, the shadow. Mm -hmm. And what this means is we have a uh, a shadow I can multiply onto other backgrounds, and so I could throw a piece of color paper in the background and then this will be set on top and that's actually what i'm going to do now um, and then you've got the the flower itself on top which has been totally unaffected by my um sort of effects i've given that and um yeah yeah so that's kind of where we're at um so always label your files absolutely mm -hmm. And uh, for now, I'm just going to group this so I can bring that back in. And so you've got the original photo at the bottom and you can kind of see now the difference in where we're at with the simple bit of retouch that I've done. Um, yeah, and, lovely. Um, also, with this flower, I'm kind of realising that we've got... Um, it's looking... Like there is some life to it, but maybe not quite as much as I would want. You know, we've got a bit of shadow going on up here, but it would be nice to maybe enhance that. And then again, this could maybe do with like looking like it was a little bit more curled. So I'm just going to add a few more um, little curves to it. But I'm going to add a sort of gradient onto those just to kind of emphasize some of those oh, okay right so uh, right i get it so you're adding the curve and then brushing that back in with a gradient yeah, yeah. and because because it's um again attached to the flower it's obviously only going to affect those little layers um rather than affect the whole image mm. so kind of and i use a gradient tool just because it's very nice and smooth i obviously could probably brush this in as well and i'd sometimes do um 
for example, I've just done this one and it's affecting both the orange and the red and I, I don't really want it on the red one. So I'm going to Nice and flexible, that's the thing, it's, yeah. Yeah, and then um, I think I'm gonna do a, slightly brighten the, the lighter leaf here. And everything I'm doing is quite subtle, you, you know, I'm trying not to push things too far because otherwise it starts just looking a little bit too digital and too edited. And that's that's not really the aim here. Oh, with mentioning the the war stories about scalpels, they've now gone back into the scalpels <laughs> talking. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Stuart's been asking about Stuart and Angus are asking about my bookshelf or my bookshelves because there are this is one of four in here. Uh, well, five if you count that one with the sketchbook shelf, which you can't see. It's out of shot. Uh, we are doing that before Christmas, by the way. I think I'm fairly certain it's coming up before Christmas. People want to explore my bookshelf. <laughs> uh, and I'm this is taking shape beautifully now I love it thanks so I kind of wanted to add Bryce in this pink up because it was getting a little flat So how long does it, it's, I mean, this is always a difficult question and, and, and really I, I doubt there's any particular answer, but on average, what's the average time it takes you on a project? How long are you working on any one project? Um, it can really vary. Obviously, um, some pieces um, can be very quick turnaround. Maybe it's an idea, a personal piece. I just want to turn around very quickly, or maybe it's, you know, like an editorial and you have a matter of days, um, mm. you know, maybe a couple of days. Other projects I'm working on for um, six months. So mm. it can it can really vary. Um, and I guess with these processes, it's allowing me to be flexible so that I can turn around stuff quicker because I've I got my process down. I, I maybe use the cutter rather than cutting by hand. I um, maybe do some quicker editing. Um, with the uh, pieces like this where we're piecing together lots of individual elements this always takes longer because there's so many individual like this is a flower of many 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 flowers in this artwork um and this is i mean this is quite a quick turnaround on this one but um you can sort of just get a sort of sense for how long it might take to do a full artwork with yeah all the and stuff um and do you do you augment with any other uh, any other materials in the work or is it 100% paper? I mean, do you use anything like um, like wire or, or anything like that? Um, occasionally, yeah. I, I kind yeah. of, I, I sometimes play with, um, for large scale builds, I'll have to move a bit away from paper because paper is so fragile. Um, and so if it's an installation going within a, a building, um, what I'll do is uh, cut that out of board, uh, acrylic, um, sometimes wood and I actually still use similar processes um, less obviously in the Photoshop realm but more in Illustrator where I'm drawing everything up to scale um, and then sending these large um, Illustrator drawings out as separate sheets but to be cut out of wood and, and that will either be something I'm doing myself where I'm sort of printing these large um, templates out onto paper sheets and taping them down onto boards so that I can use them as templates to physically cut out or send them to like a, a place which will do like acrylic sheet cutting. Um, yeah. So we're kind of similar process. Um, and then for a recent, I did a, a large installation at NASA um, uh, last year. Nice that you just dropped that in there. That's <laughs> <laughs> it, it was an unbelievable yeah. project actually, just getting yeah. to go to their uh, headquarters in Pasadena um, where they, we're actually building the moon rover uh, for the latest um, moon launch. Uh, sorry, Mars rover, the Mars 2020 rover. And just getting to see that built was incredible. But um, yeah, so, um, and we did a large installation and, and that was all cut out of uh, 
board which we did in the studio and then we were getting paint swatches to match my designs and then we were painting by hand so quite a hands-on process compared to to this one but um and then i was going to show you actually uh bringing a paper sheet into this illustration so this is something i've retouched now for you uh, you can see yeah. it's coming together and i kind of want to give you an example of bringing a sheet of color in to see how that will look and so this is a photograph of a piece of paper I've taken um, based on the sort of green uh, of the backgrounds earlier. And I actually will bring in a, actually something I didn't do in the last one, but I do often do is bring in the, um, the Illustrator drawing as a reference for colors. Um, so we've got a little swatch here to match to. Um, and so I'm doing a bit of a cleanup. So I've kind of cleaned away. You can notice there's a bit of white tack here <laughs> just to, yeah. uh, to get the camera to focus. So we're doing a bit of a cleanup. And then similarly to before, we want to um, add, we're adding curves. So I actually, I am gonna do it rather than just turn the layers on because that is cheating. Um, now, Angus so, is saying here, it's, it's great to see your work and you working at this and your techniques. And oh, Stuart thanks, is asking, Angus. Do you ever set the white balance on the camera to help with the background issue? Yeah, um, that's quite important, actually. I find that setting, a, just making sure the colors are as neutral as possible. Um, mm -hmm. Using daylight is actually really handy because naturally it's, it's such a natural light that it doesn't fight against the camera too much. Uh, mm -hmm. I find there's more issues when you're using like a light box or or some sort of UV lights and, and suddenly it's all blue or, you know, so but actually using daylight it seems so it works better to the camera set up anyway. So there tends to be less of that needed. Um, do you use a target, anything like sort of a Grey Tag Macbeth target or anything like that at all? No, no, I don't actually. No. Uh, if I'm doing a, so this is kind of me working on a, a piece myself. I do also collaborate with photographers. And yeah. um, when I'm doing that kind of work, they will have a full setup with a proper lighting rig. And, and that's kind of, um, I guess more for set design pieces, you know, with product in, I quite often, it's nice to focus on the build and then have someone else uh, focusing on the lighting and, and just for me to know that it's, it's gonna work well and I don't have to stress about it too much. Um, so working through the tones, I've got a piece of, uh, this is what I'm trying to match to now. Okay. So this is the sort of background that I am looking for. It's quite a deep tone and my photos come out a little bit um, brighter than yeah. I'm after. So uh, also Carol, Catherine uh, in our community is saying there's a company in Somerset called Two Rivers Paper uh, oh. that makes homemade paper. Of course, we well, would know where... about things in Somerset, wouldn't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, from my, uh, that's my homeland. Yeah. I need to... What was it? What was the company called? Two Rivers Paper. Oh, I have to check this out. Yeah, last I'm, one of its kind that makes homemade paper. Of course, there was the mill there, wasn't there in Wells? Yeah. For, uh, just, yeah. So I'm from uh, Cheddar Gorge, where yeah. Cheddar Cheese, where Cheddar Cheese is from. So uh, yeah. I said Wells. I meant Cheddar. <laughs> oh. There was the paper mill there, wasn't there? The. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. there still uh, is. Wookie. Still Wookie. Yeah. Yeah. There still is. Um, so I've got background paper here. Um, so I'm doing now. So I've got this background paper that I've retouched quite quickly, but you get, you get the sort of gist. Yeah. yeah. And I'm bringing it now into the Photoshop file. And you're doing that as a paste operation, not linking it in any way. Yeah, I'm just kind of bringing it in. There's, there's probably, there may be better ways of doing it, mm. but uh, I just tend to drag, drag and drop. And yep, so nice. I've got the fully editable um, paper here. So these adjustment layers were from my original. So, but, uh, and then I've got the flower here and you can see I've got the artwork and then I've got a shadow. So if I multiply the shadow now, you kind of get a sense for drops in nicely yeah um and what i was going to do is uh 
so yeah, this is quite nice now because what we've got is a flower, which kind of fully sits with on on the background, and this could then be sent to an After Effects animal or someone to bring to life, or we can do some nice gifs of the artwork, sort of building up. Um, and then there's just some final retouching to do because um, what you can see is some of my very quick pen tooling. I have missed some edges. You can see there's a bit of, bit of a messiness going on on some of these lines here. And so we kind of want to just go in again. I'm going to create a separate layer and do some cleaning up just to make sure that all of these lines are nice and clean. It's just nice and simple like that straightforward cloning in yeah, those just, parts. Yeah, it's quite simple cloning, nothing too elaborate. Yeah. Um, also, what you can see from this is um, some of the shadow is actually starting to show through because. Um, so I'm actually going to be just creating a little mask and deleting some of the, the background because we only really need the shadow below the piece. You can see these bits are quite key, but up here yeah. they're just kind of getting kind of getting in the way a little bit. So we're just gonna yeah. when you're working on the flower like that, do you ever like lock the transparency on a particular layer to avoid brushing into it or um no not so much. I uh I kind of just this is kind of fairly simple just straight into the process um but yeah i i think these are like little tips and tricks that i've learned from photographers over the year in terms of watching and retouch and actually this is uh working with others is one of my top tips um because you learn so much from just teaming up with someone seeing the little ways that they go about their process and um mm. and I, I found that really useful over the years just Kind of if ever I'm working with a photographer and they're doing a bit of a retouch, just sitting with them, be like, how, how are you doing this little thing? Why are you doing that? And, and that's been really beneficial to me and my work because um, I think it's allowed me to work, uh, well, actually work more as a solo artist rather than having to bring in photographers for all my making. And that's actually a big game changer when you're working on these kind of jobs because suddenly you can just keep it in-house um, you can sort of manage the sort of creation and, and it's really i really enjoy seeing projects through from start to finish you know actually yeah. being able to see something through and that's one of the fantastic things about these streams as well and funnily enough rufus uh rufus joins oh. us here hi rufus uh joined us rufus started these uh back in march hi, rufus. Um, for everyone and uh yeah the great thing is because of course you can't be over somebody's shoulder at the moment watching them work and learning things from their process and that's where things like this we're doing right now are incredibly valuable and also there's so many people streaming on behance at the moment showing their actual process talking their way through things yeah it's fantastic I, i've been going through some of the videos myself and it's, it's just such a like plethora of of different projects and ideas and, mm. and it's it's really exciting um and it's just it's nice to be part of it so thanks for asking no, no, I'm glad you're here. I mean, it's, it's taken long <laughs> enough to get here, so I'm glad you're here. Well, thanks for your patience. <laughs> um, so I was going to show you another little thing I do sometimes is uh, making a shadow because um, you can see I've, we've got this piece here. For me, yep. this little piece, the little central flower is sitting nicely, but it could do with maybe a bit of a harder shadow. So we're going to do a little... Uh, brilliant let's see what else is going on in the chat lots of people really appreciating these uh, streams uh, which is fantastic they are 
a brilliant thing. John's saying, my lockdown life has improved thanks to the UK live streams, which is great news. That is... Yeah. That's very sweet, isn't it? It is. It is. <clears throat> so I'm doing a... I've selected this little area and I'm doing a... You can see it's. I've turned it off here, so it's just showing that piece. And then what yeah. I'm doing is doing a select contract because um, shadows tend to be a touch smaller than uh, the item. So I'm contracting by three on this one. Yeah. And then I do select modify feather and the feather is giving it, um, yeah, obviously uh, a softness. A transition, yeah, yeah, between being opaque and, and not. So I'm going for 15 on this one. And it's, it's a bit of a guessing game for, for this. Um, and also what I'm going to do is just um, duplicate the background and flatten it. So it's kind of just a nice sheet of paper I can work off because obviously I've got all the retouch layers and everything and it's nice to just have a sheet which we can be using. Um, and so I've got this shadow that I've created here. And then I'm going to then go back to my little... Uh, So obviously you've got the adjustment layers. We want to make sure they sit on top of everything because at the moment you can see there was a little bit of a issue there. And then I'm going to add a mask to this. And then we'll invert it. So you now got this nice shadow, which is kind of working as a, just to enhance what's already there. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to just do a little quick shoe. And, and, and unless I'm, unless yeah, you are using you're using the complementary color for the shadow, which is a is a yeah. very arty technique to do that because a lot of people default to black, don't they, when they're creating oh. a shadow? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what I'm actually doing here is um, I'm using the hue to adjust it because obviously we've we've selected a green, but yeah. green is it, it's sitting on reds. So actually, what we want is to push it into more of a red. Uh, position and yep. I'm also taking the saturation out because again it's a little bit too uh, dark at the moment and taking the lightness out and you can see the the difference there it's just kind of softened mm. it much more natural because everything we're trying to do is natural you know you want it to mm. look real you don't want to look like you've just added some little shadow in there you go. You got like, and so you can kind of basically you can work these up as much as you you want. I mean, this you can uh, create shadows for every single leaf if you wanted to enhance them. Um, you can uh, push the gradients in the leaves that I've created here, you know, to the maximum. If you really want these to look like they're kind of crunching into you know darkness. But, yeah, yeah. I think for me, it's just about being subtle, um, retaining that sort of handmade feel. And, and, and basically, I'm using Photoshop as an enhancement tool for what's already been created and made rather than a, a, a pure like building tool, if that makes sense. Um, and so kind of, I guess, more like a photographer, sort of retouching what's been captured rather than uh, uh, trying to build something from scratch. Mm. Fantastic. Let's have a look. So we've got about seven minutes left of, of natural time here. And it's a good okay. time for me to remind uh, our community that the conversation doesn't have to end when the stream ends. You can carry it on on our own Discord. Do chat there. I know that a lot of you uh, do already. But if you're new here and you want to join, Tim's just going to pop the link for that into the chat. Come along and join us uh, all there. Okay. Uh, people liking the treatment for the shadows as well there. Sorry, Owen, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> oh, no worries. Oh, that's good to hear. Well, I, I was just going to say that's kind of basically that. That's kind of where we're at. And um, this would be a piece I'm happy to you know, send off. So that's kind of, that's my process, basically. It's fantastic. 
really fantastic I've, I've already got ideas for where we can get you back again at some point in the future i've got a cunning plan uh, going <laughs> on in my head because i'm sure people would uh, would like to see that has I've, i'll ask you just a couple of questions as we go on of course now's a good time for people in the chat if they've got any uh questions there um has the current sit or the situation of the last uh, six months or so has that really impacted on your work with uh, um yeah it, up with i guess um in a way it's you know obviously commissions have slowed down a touch while things have been in lockdown but it's also allowed me some more time for personal exploration and mm -hmm. in a way it's something i always talk about doing i i always have personal projects alongside my commissioned work anyway but actually it's been a kind of enforced time of like right i can actually really get stuck into these ideas and, and I, i've been using it as a chance for play so i've been doing um mm -hmm. looking at watercolors uh my wife kira Phelan, if you want to check out her work on instagram mm -hmm. she's a really fantastic uh, watercolor artist and she's been teaching me lots of techniques and so we've been just playing uh creating these paintings and then bringing those into uh my artworks which is um been fun and yeah i guess just trying to use this as a chance to try out some new things and i like, i guess also just um do something which is good for the soul because i think mindfulness is really important at the moment uh it's mm -hmm. such a stressful time and Absolutely. you know even if you're still busy still getting on with other things i think it's good to just take into account that you know it's such a stressful time um, whether you know it or not, and, and just taking a moment for yourself, doing some of those sort of playful experiments and, and uh, I guess just trying to be kind to yourself at the moment. So I think that's, that's where I'm at with things right now, doing some work, but also taking time out to play, experiment, explore, and in a way kind of build up a, like a better, better work-life balance than maybe I've had before, before this. Yeah, I think that's a good way. To do it. And I think a lot of people have seized on the opportunity to learn something different or to approach something differently. There's uh, you know, a lot of people yeah. learning things. And I think you, you, could, you could go either way. You could either decide that you're going to watch the entire catalogue of Netflix in every, every single <laughs> language, which isn't going to do you any favours at all. Or you could, you could seize the opportunity to actually develop and, and do things. Well, people yeah. have really, really enjoyed this. Sorry, one of my dogs is freaking out and somehow it's in the garden. I don't know how. Um, my house is over there, so I know that's what it is. <laughs> um, the, <laughs> but no, uh, Angus is saying this has been great content. Thank you, and please do return. Um, Caroline said it's been great to see the process. Yeah, really, really enjoyed this. So that's fantastic. Well, I think we're pr kind of pretty much uh, done now. So uh, fabulous to have you here. I do hope that you, you manage to come back to us uh, at some time in the future. Thanks that for spending the time with us. No, it's been oh, brilliant. Well, it's really nice to chat through the process. And yeah, I just hope um, people got something out of it. So yeah, thanks for the kind comments and for watching. No, absolutely brilliant. Okay, everybody, uh, don't forget, you can catch us here tomorrow at the same time, midday till one, uh, every day in the UK on weekdays. And uh, until then, take care of yourselves, stay safe, stay creative. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye.